Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Ahlam Al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control of Healthcare Facilities at Ministry of Health. And today our session will be about um, the evaluating or auditing methods for, um, for the compound sterile preparation area in the pharmacy. So the compound sterile preparation in the pharmacy is considered in the uh, domain uh, D and particularly element uh, D.2 and it consists of nine sub-elements and the activities required for evaluating or auditing the sub-elements of this um, element in the compound sterile preparation is um, through the document review or D, SI for staff interview, O for observation and the scoring it will be ranged from zero for not implemented or uh, uh, not met uh, sub-elements and one for partial limit and two for full limit and finally in A for not applicable uh, sub-elements. Sub-element D.2.1 state that there is a written infection prevention and control policy and procedure for the compound sterile preparation and the evaluating evaluation method for this sub-element will be through the document review. The compound sterile preparation area is a sterile drug um, uh, area or preparation area that was prepared by the compounding or underwent uh, other handling or manipulation prior to the administration and pharmacist uh, is responsible for preparing and storing most serial medications so compounding is the process of combining uh, these drugs ingredients to prepare a medication that are not commercially available or to alter the commercially available medication to meet a specific patient needs such as um, a dye free or liquid formulations and understanding of the risk that associated or inherent in sterile compounding and incorporating established standards are essential for the patient's safety. As a competent auditor, uh, we have to understand the specific um, aspects um, that related to the compound sterile preparation area uh, elements and sub-elements. So uh, the infection prevention and control breaches uh, that may lead to the contamination in particular in this high-risk area includes, but not limited to, Failure to follow aseptic practices, so lack of proper hand hygiene such as or, or, or following them, uh, the measures required for the aseptic techniques in this area. And also the lack of trained or qualified personnel performing the sterile pro compounding measures. And uh, or it can be through the sterile compounding occurring in the absence of proper, proper engineering controls. And also it can be through the, uh, the sterile compounding hold adjacent to the open window, or it can be uh, through the compounding hold disinfected with alcohol, but that with insufficient uh, strength. And also it can be through the improper storage of sterile medication vials. So the commonly prepared, commonly sterile products are susceptible to microbial contamination. So we have a specific organism that has the ability to proliferate in different uh, fluids such as Klebsiella's ratio can multiply in 5% uh, dextrose and Candida also can grow slowly whereas Staphylococcus um, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa die slowly in dextrose. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, Acinetobacter and Seratia will grow in the distilled water and also according to the evidence that um, uh, we have a microbial growth with the exception of Candida species uh, is uh, possible in 0.9% of sodium chloride solution. So uh, based on this uh, reference, we have to put um, our uh, more strict uh, policy and procedure and measures uh, must be implemented in this high risk area to avoid any contamination, which is easily that can be uh, injected uh, through the uh, bloodstream of the patients and uh, it will lead to high mortality and morbidity rate. So for evaluating this uh, document, we have to review the uh, policy and procedure in regard of the compound sterile preparation, um, and which should be always comprehensive. Uh, that means incorporating all aspects of sterile compounding, uh, so such as the methods for preventing contamination of compound sterile preparation through the aseptic technique in this area, uh, by practicing a proper aseptic technique to prevent contamination, uh, of the pharmaceutical which are associated with the epidemics and also uh, through removing any hand or wrist jewelry and perform hand scrubbing before each procedure and also through the uh, 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 cleaning and disinfecting nails and hand and forearms with antimicrobial soap before handling sterile products by implementing a specific um, uh, sequence of, uh, of uh, hand uh, sanitization. 
So another um, uh, aspect must be considered when we are talking about the accepted technique in this uh, policy. It's supposed to be about them uh, using a particular uh, uh, personal protective equipment. And also um, another um, uh, title must be, or subtitle must be uh, uh, stated in the policy in the compound sterile uh, preparation about the engineering control in this area. So it's recommended that in preparing compound sterile procedure using um, a primary engineering control device such as laminar airflow hood or biological safety cabinet capable of maintaining an international organization for standardization or ISO class 5. Another aspect must be uh, reported or stated in the policy about the cleaning and disinfection of this high-risk area. So we need to disinfect the work surfaces and accessible interior surfaces of the hold with a hospital-approved disinfectant by applying a specific measures required or method of, uh, or activities required for a specific uh, manner of cleaning and disinfection of this high-risk uh, high area and the rules and responsibilities uh, of the uh, pharmacy personnel or authorized personnel in this area or the housekeeping in regard of cleaning and disinfection of this area and also um, uh, uh, the way of uh, disinfecting the entire surfaces of the uh, whole area and all the supplies used uh, in this area. And also we have to consider that the authorized personnel in this high-risk area is supposed to be a pharmacist and pharmacy technician that are uh, qualified and trained uh, and responsible for preparation of compounding sterile materials. And, uh, and all the activities that implemented uh, in this area must be uh, um, uh, conducted through this authorized personnel. And failure to follow sterile compounding um, uh, measures and proper accept technique, uh, it could be lead to the intrinsic and extrinsic contamination and uh, accordingly to um, high mortality rate. Uh, quality um, control monitoring in this area will also must be uh, mentioned in the same policy. So by using a single dose vial uh, whenever possible for, um, for mixing of parenteral preparations. And also we have to uh, monitor the parameters such as the temperature and humidity and uh, in this specific area. And we have to examine the final sterile product for any leak cracks and uh, or particulate matter. And also we have to examine the label um, uh, and we always have to label all mixed parenteral fluids that uh, prepared by this uh, personnel or, or authorized personnel in this area. And based on the, all the previous mentioned um, uh, aspects that must be um, uh, documented in the same policy will give the score based on that as a fully applicable. And the, um, uh, the same policy must be based on approved references in the infection control uh, practices such as MOH, GCC, CTT, WHO, and EBIC guidelines or protocols or documents. And it must be always signed from authorized personnel owner of the policy or hospital director or medical director and also the concerned department. And always remember that all the policy must be discussed and approved in the IBC committee and it will be valid for um, uh, within two to three years and after that must be updated. And uh, if we have any uh, released or disseminated guidelines or protocols or any documents from um, uh, at national level, we have to update our policy even prior this time. Sub-element D.2.2 state that compound sterile preparation is restricted to competent pharmaceutical staff except during emergency situations when we have to have a familiar uh, staff uh, with accepted techniques and proper use of appropriate PPE and this sub-element must be uh, evaluated through observation and staff interview. So we have to observe the staff uh, working area in the compound sterile preparation, how the personnel are entering, uh, and um, how the staff comply with the appropriate PPE and the accepted technique. And also we have to observe if the authorized personnel working in the compound sterile preparation are familiarized with the rules of um, uh, and, uh, and protocols uh, and the aspect that mentioned in the policy. Uh, such as in the hand hygiene, use of the sterile PPE, the cleaning and disinfection of the own uh, supplies used and the environment that they are working on. And also we can evaluate or audit this sub-element through interview with the healthcare workers working or assigned in this area uh, by asking them about their privilege and authorization to work in the compound sterile preparation area. If they are receiving any specific training and workshops um, about the required measures um, uh, in this high-risk area. 
and we can inquire them about the um, uh, last comprehensive uh, training of aseptic technique or using PPE or the other aspect that uh, related to the policy. And we can ask randomly selected staff to demonstrate hand hygiene technique and PPE donning and doffing sequences uh, who are working in the same area. And uh, we have to um, notice that not all authorized to work and enter the compound cell preparation apart from privilege or special condition. Sub-element D.2.3 state that compound serial preparation room or area is a functionally separated facility which is under positive pressure and this sub-element is evaluated through document and observation. So by evaluating this uh, sub-element we have to review the document related to the log sheet or monitors of the positive pressure in this area and it can be uh, uh, reviewing the whole month in the last month to see uh, the variation or the value that recorded in the same log sheet. And it's supposed to be plus five Pascal. And observe if there any uh, um, uh, deranged or, or out um, uh, value uh, in the past and evidence document for the necessary action taken. And if the you noticed any uh, out of range uh, or um, any uh, danger uh, values, uh, we have to ask them uh, to show you the documents of any interventions or actions taken to correct the situation. We have also to observe the location of compound sterile preparation room area is, is physically separated from other area or pharmacy and the availability of pressure gauge or fixed monitor outside um, this room. And also we have to monitor must have um, impelled audiovisual alarm system that uh, to alert the staff in case of any deranged pressure gradients. Sub-element D.2.4, the doors of the compound serial preparation room or area are equipped with the auto-closure mechanism. And this um, uh, sub-element, it can be uh, um, evaluated through observation of the door of the compound serial preparation room are equipped with this auto-closure mechanism. And it's self-closing with the auto-closure mechanism will ensure that the pressure control is maintained inside this room. And based on your observation, will give score for the sub-element. Sub-element uh, D.2.5 state that mixing IV medication is performed in laminar airflow hold or safety cabinet with air supply through high efficiency uh, particulate um, air uh, filter or HEPA filter. And this sub-element will be evaluated through document and uh, observation. So reviewing the document uh, that regarding the manufacturer and manual of laminar airflow hold or safety cabinet that must be available in the unit. And also we have to uh, check the document uh, stating the last time when HIPAA filter was being changed and PPM for the safety cabinet hold and quality monitoring and checking of safety cabinet and hold. And based on your um, update obtained um, uh, reviewing, uh, you will give a scoring for this particular sub-element. We have also to observe the compound personnel practices uh, when they are working inside the compound sterile preparation area, if all mixing of IV medication inside the uh, laminar flu safety cabinet or hold or not. And based on your observation, you will give scoring for the sub-element. Sub-element D.2.6 state that compound sterile preparation room or area is clean and disinfected with an approved detergent or disinfectant and assigned staff um, or healthcare worker um, are well trained on the cleaning or disinfection process. And this sub-element is evaluated through document review, observation, and staff interview. So we have to review the document about the cleaning and disinfection schedule of the um, uh, compound cell preparation room. And uh, also we can review the rules and responsibility of the compound cell preparation healthcare workers and also as well as housekeeping staff during the cleaning and the disinfection um, uh, activities that specified in this document. And also we can check the uh, reviewing the material safety data sheet of the used materials for this cleaning and disinfection activities. Observing the type of detergent or disinfectant are being used um, in this area, it can be uh, also give us um, a method for uh, evaluating of this sub-element and also how the process of cleaning and disinfection is being carried uh, out inside, uh, inside the uh, compound sterile preparation area. And if the floor and other areas are kept clean and tidy, and we can randomly wipe any surfaces to confirm this, um, this activity is, uh, or the cleaning and disinfection is um, appropriately maintained. We can also interview with the housekeeping about 
uh, their responsibilities um, in cleaning process and frequency of cleaning based on their schedule and the type of disinfectant or detergent they are using. And also we can ask them if they have dedicated mop for the compound sterile preparation area, which is considered a high risk area. Sub-element D.2.7 state that working surface under the laminar airflow hose is regularly disinfected by an approved disinfectant using non-linting wipes. And this sub-element is um, evaluated through observation and staff interview. And also we can review how the compounding personnel are disinfecting the working surfaces under the laminar airflow hood uh, through observing the technique and type of disinfectant being used um, and the availability of disinfectant inside the compound sterile pre uh, preparation area to ensure that the disinfection processes are implemented there and if non-linting wipes are available and used. And also we have to put in, in our mind that a lint-free cloth is a special type of cleaning cloth that does not give up any fluff uh, fibers when used and less likely to generate any electrostatic changes. We can also interview with the healthcare workers in the compound sterile preparation area about the frequency of cleaning uh, of their working uh, surfaces area and also about the type of disinfectant being used and the technique that implemented and contact time that applied uh, by uh, disinfection and cleaning of this um, surface area. Sub-element D.2.8 state that maintenance record for the holds and safety cabinets are available and this sub-element are evaluated through the document review. So we can review the quality control records and periodic preventive maintenance BBM records of the holds and safety cabinets to ensure that the certification um, are uh, applied annually or more frequently as needed and maintain a certification records. And also we can review the validity of the certificate and BBM maintenance record, all maintenance records uh, that already uh, um, stored in this area. Uh, and also based on your um, uh, uh, obtained um, uh, noted uh, observation or through this document review, you can give your score of this sub-element. Sub-element D.2.9 state that all supplies and containers used in the combined cellar preparation area are sterile. And this sub-element is uh, reviewed um, or evaluated through observation and staff interview. So we have to observe the availability of all supplies and containers in the compound sterile preparation area and confirm if they are sterile or not. And observe if the supply is stored at appropriate storage area. And also uh, sometimes you will see a huge amount of sterile supply is kept in the anteroom with increased risk of contamination. And based on your observation, you will give a score for this sub-element. And also we can interview with the uh, compound uh, sterile preparation area personnel regarding the type of supplies and containers are being used. And based on their answers, you will give them the required score for the sub-elements. And we can ask them also about how to ensure the, steril the sterility of containers. Thank you for attending uh, the session. And if you have any further inquiries or questions, do not uh, hesitate to contact us through our email at gdibc.sa or you can send us a text message through the WhatsApp or, or contact your regional coordinator of ICA Obtain Program. Thank you so much.